What's up? It's uh, John Smith coming at you with another installment uh, today. I'm alone, but uh, I thought I would give uh, a topic that we talked about today and um, on our show, you know, two guys, one mic. I thought I would give uh, the topic of a Terminator reboot. Another go. And so I found this article on Hollywood Reporter, and I thought that <laughs> it was a little uh, absurd, but this is the new image uh, of the Terminator franchise. We got Linda Hamilton, uh, Natalia Reyes, and Mackenzie Davis. And Mackenzie Davis, for some reason, looks like a guy. I thought this was a guy the first time I saw it. And there's some kind of like cross here and like, it's just, there, there's some kind of like, you know, tattooing. So obviously she's either a Terminator or some sort of other thing. But this guy, this lady right here looks like she just stepped off of work at like Walmart or a fast food restaurant. And Linda Hamilton looks like she's ready to go to war. To war. But what was insensate and sensing our if that's a word, uh, what incensed me about this article was the fact that these go people go on and talk about it's not just what's in the image, but what isn't. Although the first image from next year's Terminator Revival reveals nothing new about the plot of the movie, it does suggest that the franchise might have rediscovered its heart after far too many years in the wilderness. How did it manage that? Well, just look at what's in the image, or what really, what isn't. The image tweeted from the official Terminator account this morning shows left to right Natalia Reyes, Mackenzie Davis, and the returning Linda Hamilton looking ready for battle as they approach the viewer, battered and bruised with a flaming and smoking wreckage in the background. It has been lauded for the first opportunity to see Hamilton Sarah Connor since 1991's Terminator Judgment Day. But as welcome as that is, there's another less obvious reason to get excited about the movie because of this image. There are no men in the photo. I mean, come on. I know that we're in this trend in Hollywood where it's cool to hate on white men and, you know, the reason why things like Ghostbusters 2016 and Ocean's 8 didn't do well, it's because of oppressive white men and bigots and haters and man babies and, you know, you go look as far as what happened with Star Wars The Last Jedi, okay? You know, this idea that now we have to have women that don't need men in every bit of entertainment that we have, and then we get mad when it doesn't do well. This looks like a hot mess. This is not going to do well. I mean, Terminator is a guy-centric franchise. I don't understand how hard that is to get. The first movie was rated R. It was because it did well because Arnold Schwarzenegger was in the title role. You didn't even know who Linda Hamilton was. You didn't even know who uh, <laughs> Reese was, okay? Like, that didn't matter. It was because Arnie is the Terminator. And then, okay, 1991's Terminator 2 did well because of Arnold Schwarzenegger. It wasn't just Linda Hamilton. It was Arnie. I mean, that's what makes the Terminator franchise. I don't understand what is wrong with Hollywood today, where they think that, for some reason, having a white male or any male in the title role is <laughs> wrong. I mean, things like this are ridiculous. So we go on. Under the control of the franchise creators, Jam Can James Cameron, Terminator was always a story about a woman. No, it really wasn't. There were obviously men in the movie, Sarah, son, John, as the MacGuffin that gets the story going after all, and there are both sidekicks, high Kyle Reese, high old school Terminator and T2, and male threats, but at the center of it all, unmistakably, is Sarah Connor. You know, the first one had Sarah as the main character, sure, but it was as much about Kyle Reese and the Terminator. I mean, it didn't do good just because Sarah Connor was in that role, and because Linda Hamilton was Sarah Connor. She was the engine of the resistance and the change for the entire narrative and for both Cameron's movies, the only character that really provided any emotional hook for the audience. That is bullshit. Okay? Complete bullshit. Michael Bean, who played Kyle Reese in the first movie, uh, <laughs> it was, it, it was uh, just infuriating. 
Compare this with the subsequent movies in the series, of all which have been greater or less degrees shunned by audience and Terminator fans alike. The main character of 2003's Terminator Rise of the Machines is an adult John Connor. The main character of 2009's Terminator Salvation is again John, with newcomer Marcus Wright sharing the spotlight. For Terminator Genesis, though Amelia Clark's Sarah was present, Kyle Reese was arguably the protagonist this time around, with Sarah pushed to the background as a result. Indeed, since Cameron left the series in the 1990s, arguably the most successful critically and also with the franchise core base, Entry wasn't a movie at all. It was the television series Terminator of the Sarah Connor Chronicles. It really wasn't. That series did not do well, and it was a hot mess, which not only centered around Sarah, as the name suggests, but also included a female Terminator replacing Schwarzenegger, and in the second season introduced Catherine Weaver, a disguised Terminator that serves as this year's big bad. <sighs> The lessons seem obvious, but this one that only appears to have learned with the release of his new promotional image. Let me reread that. The lesson seems obvious, but it's one that only appears to be able to learn with the release of its new promotional image. This is making the argument that the reason that the last three movies failed was because they had a male in the title role. That's not why they failed. They failed because they sucked. I mean, Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 only did well because it was directed by James Cameron because the story was good. It doesn't matter who's in the role. White, black, Mexican, whatever. Male, female, it doesn't matter. If your story is good, the story is good. If it's not, sweetheart, the story is not good. Anyway, the visual that audiences needed to see to have faith in a new installment isn't the eponymous robot threat. Any number of grimacing male action heroes brandishing weapons while sweating or callbacks to earlier promo posters, none of that is what makes this series special. What is, is meeting the women who are going to fight back and save tomorrow. Good work so far, Terminator. Now we're just waiting for the first teaser trailer to follow through. Tim Meyer's Terminator opens November 22nd, 2019. Let's just show the comments here. First one, amazing how Dummy Wood just loves to throw money away so that they can burst your signal. Incoming bomb. I upvoted this because that, there is no truer statement. <sighs> I don't know what's wrong with Hollywood. I don't know what's wrong with people that write this, you know, Miss McMillan. I'm assuming, Grandma Me McMillan, I'm assuming that's a woman. Uh, I don't know. But writing stuff like this that just incenses people is how you get clicks. And obviously it got me to read it, but I mean, I think this photo looks like hot garbage. You know, this movie is going to bomb. It is going to not do well. You know, you can't just have a movie with female leads in it and not have a male actor because this movie appeals towards males. Women are not gonna go out in droves and see an action movie that's rated R. I, I, I don't understand what is wrong with Hollywood these days. I don't understand what is wrong with <laughs> their interpretation that, oh, because it has three women and it's gonna do well. No, it's not gonna do well. It looks horrible. This image looks horrible. The Terminator series was rated R when it began. It was about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I just thought I would read this on air and just vent a little bit. So check back with me, check back with two guys, one mic, uh, we'll be back with more content later. Thanks.